Do you want to play a class that's easy to play and does big damage? Do you like playing classes that can save the whole group in times of grave danger? And do you want to be a class that can make a lot of money by porting people around? Well, if you do, this is a class for you. This is a wizard, everybody, and uh, welcome to the wizard tutorial, TLP version. Okay, let's get started. Now, there's a bunch of different uh, races that can be wizards. Uh, well, let's start with the human right here and go to this. The humans have the worst statistics out of all of them at 110 intelligence. Not many people like to play humans. They do have an advantage of the starting area and it's uh, a class that's the beautiful people. So you're going to be the best looking in my opinion. Although some say the dark elves can be. Your next up on the list is going to be the gnome here. You can see they start off with 133 intelligence. They have good stats. And next you're going to have your dark elf even better and finally you're going to have your rudite which at 142 forgot to mention over here the high elf the high elf has a it's a little bit better than a human but not as good as a gnome they're okay stats the strength is a little weak but not really a problem so a bunch of classes can play the wizard um, but today since we all know that the rudite is the most powerful with the best stats and the most popular is the dark elf in many cases Let's make a human because the humans just don't get enough love. And the thing is, is I want to show you what the starting location looks like. So you can kind of get an idea because a lot of people pass the human and they end up coming to the newbie grounds to fight. So let's go into this and start it out. Okay, here's your stats, 90 stamina. The intelligence is going to be a big deal when you hit level 50. Uh, other classes are going to have probably 200 more mana than you. That's uh, enough to fire a big nuke. But hey, that's okay. If you got good gear, you're okay. Especially if you come on late to the server, you'll be able to buy gear for this. Um, so I wouldn't buy anything until much later. Okay, so here we go. Let's make a character. Okay, Samantha Stevens would be a good name. And here we go. Into West Freeport we go. We'll be loading in. As we load in, okay, so here we are. We're here in West Freeport. The first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and change the settings, auto split, do the normal thing here. I've got my sound set down like this. Um, you can do that. Let's go ahead and you can make sure your display is set. I set my clipping plane up. You set your gamma up very high as a human because the humans are blind as a bat. Can't really see all that well. Make sure you load up your uh, your things here. Um, this is your layout. If you already have a layout from a previous game, you copy it over to the EverQuest directory. And let's get uh, uh, one of these here, like this. I'm going to copy this over. And it takes a little while, so there's going to be a little delay. And no, we did not crash. It just takes a while. There we go. And we do have some parcels because we're getting set up to do this here. So first things first, you got to get your nice uh, robe here. There you go. Put this on. Now we look cool. So I'm going to go over here and show you. These are the wizard spells this is where you're going to start off if you start at West Freeport. And you can see right here they have the early spells. The spells you should be buying, you have already, you'll see here, you have Blast of Cold, so you don't want to buy that, or Minor Shielding. You want to go ahead and buy Frostbolt, Numbing Cold, Okio's Radiation is a Damage Shield. It does some damage, it doesn't last that long, it's okay. Uh, later on, you want to get Shock of Fire, uh, you want to get Firebolt, and you want to get Ice Strike, and these are the good ones to get up to level 6. I wouldn't buy any higher than this. Uh, they cost about uh, six or seven um, silver here. So if you're short on cash, just buy up to Shock of Fire at level four and go ahead and do things over again. Now, since Freeport is really tricky to get around, 
instead of just dying and ending up out there, one way you can do it, like I said, is you can die and get to the parcel vendor. I mean, get to the uh, outside here in the newbie grounds. That's easy. But let's go ahead and show you how to get to the parcel vendor first. So here we go. We're going to go up. If you're following in the map, you can see me right down here. Okay, we're going to go out. And it's a door here. And by the way, I don't like the new Freeport at all. It's it's really too bad that it's changed. The, the old Freeport was so, so charming. The new one is just a maze. But of course, this one, they probably had to put Arkstone in there. And that's where we just came from. So let's go over here. What you want to do is kill some monsters first. You get some money, even though we've got the items in our parcel to keep the video short. We're going to kill some monsters. I'm going to show you just about how much money you're going to get from killing them. It's uh, more than enough to handle it. You'll get some platinum. Let's spin a left here. It's really easy to get out of here. Uh, you have fletching supplies. You have all this stuff. You'll notice around here, this confusing place. Very, very confusing. You have the town crier. We have a little uh, skateboard jump here. So go over that. Right over here, what's really nice is you have vendors that will sell you stuff like this guy here. Uh, and then you've got the people over there. So it's good to sell. You've got guards over here that will offer protection for you. And a tree? I don't know why they put the tree there. It's serving no use. Okay, so first things first. When you come out here, you see how these... Let me show you how to set these um, hotkeys up. Pressing 1 will start a melee attack with your steak knife. Pressing 3 will set up the shield. If you want to move this over, hold down the left mouse button, move it over like this, and click there. Now number 2 will fire your first nuke. Okay, let's try it. And like that, press number 3. And now we got minor healing, minor shielding. Put this like this, and you can sit down. I'll give you the fine key here, and I'll leave this here so you can see. Now, a lot of people in the old days used to open the spell book like this, left click here, and move a spell over there. But the new way to do it is to go to empty spell gem, right click it, and you can select direct damage, blast of cold, hit point buffs, shielding. So this is a new way to do it. It's a much better way to do it because it's too easy to get lost in the spell book right there. Later on, you're going to have a lot of spells, and there's probably no way you're going to remember which spells are which. So get used to doing this here and uh, we'll go from there now the thing to keep in mind here is that let's talk about your nuke here how much damage does this do it does 11 and 18. let's take a look at how much mana you have in your situation here so your situation is you got 24 mana points this is you can fire three of these so that means you can do at a minimum you can do about 33 damage you're gonna have to make that up with this good old steak knife over here the dagger so uh, you have to really be careful what you attack because some things you can hit them like this death fist pawn but if you get resisted you may not have enough uh, mana to take them on what i would suggest otherwise is decayed skeletons because sometimes you see that guy has a weapon there that weapon is big money this other guy up there i believe that is a centurion this guy don't mess with the miss level. You just basically don't have enough mana. As a wizard, you have to start thinking uh, not so much in terms of how much health you have, but how much mana do you have? Can you take him down? This guy's got a weapon. Let's go for it. Let's try it. And stay here. You don't want to be too close to the guards. It's going to be close. Let's see if we can hit him. We're going to have to steak knife. Oh, don't you go there. We got him. See, you don't want him to go over there because they will kill, steal him, meaning they'll kill him and you, you will not get the credit. This thing is just a, a money item that you sell for loot and you can come back here. You want to get those decayed skeletons. If you're starting early on a TLP server, you're going to notice this area is very camp. But if you come in later, it's all to yourself and you can take your time. Now let's talk about mana regen. So your mana regen is four. Four mana per tick. So it's going to take you a while. And, and early on, uh, the wizard has a lot of downtime due to sitting and metting, but you can see how fast the DPS is and range DPS is very, very good. And, and I've always said that later on you're going to be useful in raids, just like the necromancer. So you may feel that in uh, the group scenario you have a limited DPS, you know, you just fire it and you, you're going to med and all that, and you'll see mages constantly adding to DPS. But later on, if you want to be, like I said, if you want to be the one to save the group, with an evac, if you want to be able to save uh, 
the group with the big nukes to finish off mobs, then this class is for you. So let's go ahead. There's another guy with a decayed skeleton with a weapon. Let's take him down. That looks like a good weapon. Notice he's white con. That means he's the same level. Notice how nukes fire very fast. Bam! Just like that. And uh, bone chips, you can sell them. This is a rusty sword. This will sell for money. And you have these guys. Remember, that takes about two-thirds of your mana. Always keep in uh, mind how much mana it's going to take you. And if you do get in melee situations, put the shield up. Now, I want to point something out. These guys like Death Fist Pawn, they are social with Orcs and Tyrion. So if they're nearby, they'll help each other out. Uh, most of the other monsters here won't help each other out. So you can pick them off like the skeletons. You can go and nail them. Close in the range. Oh, come on. There we go. Just nice and easy. He had a weapon, but where did his weapon go? Anyway, you can sell these bone chips. So let's go ahead and sell the stuff, see what we can get. And then I'll show you the parcel vendor and how to stay out in the field and make a meal that can transfer stuff to you. Now we go over to here. Stay away from uh, Bomba the Big over there. He doesn't have good prices. Um, so go ahead right click him and in here you will notice there's a lot of cloth uh, armor in here some people are tempted to buy it but if you look at the price here like this cloth shirt is five gold right here see five gold uh, that's not worth it and the reason why is because when you hunt the death fist pawns out there or centurions they sometimes drop this armor so don't be the the new player that goes out here and spends all your money on this because this cloth armor doesn't really make much of a difference. It only it does 4 AC, but uh, you're ranged attack, so you're, it's not going to be a big deal. Anyway, you get this, 2 gold. Save this money because this money you want to uh, use towards your spells. These things are 1 silver each. You can uh, sell these later. Once again, you met up. And uh, I've always said that this is one of the classes that you can play while at work because there's only two buttons you fire, and that is sit and um, nuke that's all there is to it you get your mana up and you fight him uh, a note about the kind of monsters you're facing live animals will run from you but undeads like snakes will not run like skeletons will not run from you so they're good you can um, sneak up on them and blow them away let's sneak up on this guy here fizzle means you need a higher skill Let's get him. Boom. Just like that. We're getting experience, a couple more kills, but we don't have that much mana to get those kills. What you can do instead is you can try to melee these things down. We'll do it like this. There's a skeleton over there. Let's go melee on him. There we go. Follow him. Attack from the back. We got it. Find a safe place to med. So it's, you can see it's a little slow. You, later on, you want to group up with um, you want to group up with a bard that has a mana song or enchanter because they'll give you faster mana regen. So if there's some uh, enchanter in your group, you definitely want that. I'm tempted to knock this decayed, decayed skeleton out before he runs away, and we will get ready to level. And if we had enough, we could buy one of our other spells. It's very good. Called numbing cold it has a better man efficiency and boom boom bang like that one more kill and we're gonna be there and you can I can show you the next spells so overall fun class very fun class to play um, in my opinion although it does have its downtime let's get this guy here There we go. There we go, got him. Okay, there we go. We made level two right there. So let's go ahead and sell and go back to our vendor here. And off we're going to sell. See, this sells for one silver, nine copper, four copper. Okay, so now we have uh, two gold. And two gold is uh, enough to buy your first level spell. Let's now go to, we're going to go over to Parcel Vendors, this guy here. 
you click him now it doesn't sometimes the, the the trail doesn't show up but you can look at it on the map and see while you're in the map you can't manipulate the map it's a little tricky to get to here let's go over there see there it doesn't let you change the map which is kind of weird this is gonna go we're gonna go this way I'm gonna go oh why did they destroy the old Freeport it's so nice and I used to know my way around the old Freeport like the back of my hand it was a great place for people to meet up but now you have this place which is strange so if you're coming back to the game and you're wondering why they did this I have no idea I have no idea oh I don't know why they would do it but there we go Here's your parcel vendors. Use find to get there. And find like this, and we're going to get all our stuff here. Okay, so in here we have uh, money that was sent to us already, and this could work the other way. And the way this works is if you're out in the field, you get all your items here, and you can send them to somebody. Like let's send it to Cleo here. I'm going to send bone chips to Cleo. Okay, so it sends, see the message there? It's been sent. Now let's do something. Let me show you how to send money. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. Everybody has trouble with it because this is a new system. Pick up a piece of money while you're in the parcels tab. Move this over here just so you can see and you don't forget. Drop it in there. Hit deposit. Put the name in there and bam. It goes one. We sent one copper to Cleo. What a deal. Cleo sent us three platinum. If you want to get three platinum or you want to get a couple gold and you're not sure what everybody does on the new TLP servers, what most people do is before they get in there, they'll run the mail run. And I have a, a video on it called the first thing to do when starting new TL on a TLP or TLP edition. And that shows you how to get uh, a few platinum to start off with. It's always important to do that because that quest is very, very easy to run. Each run gives you six gold. And you can do that in about five minutes and make enough to buy spells. At six gold, you're going to buy a lot. So take a look at these here. Let's go ahead and pick up all of these spells. And I'll explain each one of these here. If you've seen the wizard spell guide, you'll know which ones are there. But uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, this is gate is level four. So let's go. We're going to scribe Frostbolt. We're going to scribe O'Keels and uh, numbing cold these are good spells okay so let's go ahead and show you how this goes let's take this off take that off the first spell that i would put in here is put in a direct damage let's put in um blast of cold frostbolt does have a bigger range but you do need to have line of sight and you can go with either one you want you have to kind of know how many hit points the mobs have and uh, how you want to fire them. Let's put another direct damage in here. Let's put Frost Bolt. And we're going to go with this loadout here. And it takes a while to see the purple bar going across. The purple bar means it's still writing the spell book. It will get faster later on as you level up. And this one here, Numb and Cold, you know it's a blue spell. This means that it only hits things that are standing right next to you in a small radius. So this is important um, because you don't want to, to be thinking that you're going to hit mobs far away. I've had people use this and they think that, oh, they're going to hit the chain armor guy and they keep popping the spell and they're like, hey, it's not hitting him. What's going on? Okay, hit point buffs. I usually leave a very last uh, spell when, uh, spell gem. Click Right click in the spell gem, hit point buffs, shielding. You want to have your minor shielding because uh, this will give you extra hit points and I'll show you how much it gives. Okay, so right now you have hit points as 56. You want this shield up when you're out there because this will, this will help you survive. Okay, we got 56 and now I have 63. So that's just 7 hit points. That's not a whole lot, but it does make a difference. And let's see if we want to do anything else. User beneficial. This is a damage shield. Now this is only if they hit you. But let's take a look at how much mana this costs. This costs 15 mana. Once again, let's go ahead and compare how much this... Is it worth it? That's the real question. Is it worth it? And then we're going to have Numb and Cold. So this thing here doesn't do much uh, damage. It only hits for a few points each time. 
and it only lasts 36 seconds. So it's meant to be it's meant to be casted on yourself or a tank or something like that right before the battle starts. If you cast it too early, you're just blowing mana. And 15 mana is a lot of mana. Let me show you how much mana you do have. If you look over here, you only have 48 mana. So that's about one third of your mana. So my opinion, O'Keel's very situational. If you can't hit the mob and you're fighting something that your nukes and you know will not land on, put a keels on the tank. It's more for a group thing, but don't put it on yourself and go meleeing because a uh, wizard is not really the same thing as a tank. You're not very strong. That's a job of the tank right there or the mage pit. Okay, so this is going to be loadout. It's going to be one, two, three, and then blast of cold, fire bolt, uh, frost bolt. Let's go like this. Let's switch them, hold down left button, click over here. So you're going to go blast of cold to pull. You're going to have frost bolt and you have numbing cold. Let's change this up a little. Let's put this here like that. So you can do just like that. And so the orders, we're going to use keys one, two, and three if we have to, if we're going to pull from a long range and we want to use this one, the bolt. And here's what the bolt looks like. The bolt has a range. Um, look at the range. It's 300. See everything else is 200 range. So this can hit things way out there. But once again, it has to have line of sight it's like a guided missile basically so it's a huge huge range mana of six is good and it does 10 to 14 damage uh, over here blast of coals is a mana of eight and it does 12 to 18 damage so they're all pretty much even but here's the one that's really really good six mana for 14 damage okay this is an instant 14 take a look in here um, this one's 10 to 14 so frost bolts a little bit lower and over here, this one here has the best ratio. So what you want to do is you want to fire off your first spell, fire off your second spell, and your third spell. You could actually lead with Frostbolt and then hit them. And then as they come in, you could switch back and shoot Blast of Cold. This is if they're long range. So say he's at 250 range, you fire Frostbolt. Then you fire Blast of Cold. And then you go ahead and fire Numb and Cold. Or you can just go Blast of Cold if he's closer at 200 range, Frostbolt and fire just go one two three boom and that's all you do okay so now that you have that taken care of your meditate has gone up if you're not sure how to get here once again scroll all the way down control f for find and you can go to the common lands and this will send you to the common lands and the common lands is over there but in the case of the find we don't need that here's how you use the map take off this here this will center it on you and you are right there. It's hard to see, but let's go here. You can see it moving now. Let's go back out there and try our new spell lineup and see how it all goes. You're going to see it's going to have maximum destruction, but there is a word of caution when using the third spell numb and cold, you have to make sure there's no other monsters nearby because it will also hit them. That can be good and that can be bad because it means you could set up a, a little AE team with a bunch of wizards. We've done it before. And it can blow everything away, which makes it really nice. Nice and easy. Okay, here's the, the um, skateboard jump right here. And it's, isn't it nice to put something here? You can go whoop, go right over the top. And let's go out and do some destruction. Big destru destruction. Okay, so we're going to try to get an area where there are no mobs near us. So we can use the numbing cold spell. Okay, here we go. Let's see what do we have here. Centurion. Okay, this is a little harder. Let's see if we can take this guy here. If we can't, we're going to just run it. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Since he's out there, let's use number two, the bolt. Here we go. Numbing cold. Look at that. And here we go. So you can see the bars. There we go. Good. Eat my steak knife here. All right, let's cut him down. Bam! Okay, he dropped a brick of whatever. Iron ore. Well, let's go ahead and sell that thing. Okay, so you can see right there, that's good. Here's this guy. Can hit him with a frost bolt. Look at the range on that. Bang! And insufficient mana to cast this. Okay, we'll go with three. This thing doesn't take much mana, and just like that. So, got to know your mana. See, number three takes only six mana so we had six mana we can pop that off and just like that we got some experience now 
on a uh, new TLP server like Eridun or Rizlona, your experience will be a lot less. You may get about 4% uh, for killing a yellow or maybe even more depending on what it is. It's hard to tell here. But see, that's how we do it. We, we're going to load out this here. Let me show you again the routine. One, two, and here comes three. And notice we do have our shield up. If you are in a group and you're not getting hit much, I would suggest not even bringing the shield up. Just save your mana. Groups like to look for people that are mana efficient. For example, if you're a healer and you're not getting hit much, you don't have to put your hit point buff up or anything like that. Just keep it on the tank is what I suggest. But if you're in a situation where you know you're going to get hit, then keep this up. This is a situation where we're going to get hit. Um, so I would go ahead and keep that up. So this is, remember, the loadout. You're going to enter with this one. Blast the cold if they're not too far away. You're going to fire this and do some damage. You're going to go down the list and fire this here. Fire frost bolt. And then you're going to, when they get right on top of you, uh, fire numb and cold. And this is usually enough to destroy most things out there. So you'll also see that uh, this frost bolt may have a long cooldown. And what a cooldown is, is it means it takes a while for the spell button to come back up. Let's go out here and let's test it again. And let's see if it would be nice if we can get a an orc pawn or something and, and get some clothing for you. There's one way over there. I wonder if we can hit him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Even I make that mess up here. Wrong one. Look at this frost bolt. Look at that. Bam! Way out there. Come on over and get him to come all the way in. And it, I'll just let him come right up to me. And I'll use numb and cold on him. There we go. Save your mana. You see, just let him come in. If he hits you, it'll raise your defense skill. And this is important that you have defense. And here's a skill right over here. Defense is only 5 out of 10. This influences your armor uh, class. You want to have good armor class because you will get hit later on. I mean, it's not going to be too bad, but you will still get hit. So see how I did that? And we want to get the cloth armor. Death Fist Pawn. This guy's got a weapon. It's fire. Look at this. Look at the range. Bang. If you want to, you can just go ahead and... See, look at the range difference. Bam. Okay, so this we can't have. There it is. Cloth Choker. So let's get this. We're going to drop the metal thing there. The thing. There you go. Our first piece of armor. Small Cloth Choker. Okay. It won't fit us, but nevertheless, you can sell this back and make some money off it. But look at this, you can just stay in one spot. Look at this, here we go, let's nail this guy here. Wait till he gets out. Look at the range, wow, boom. Okay, look at the cooldown here. It's 10 seconds. Back up, keep nailing him. Bang! Look at that. Okay, now the area around us is clear. Pop him with the point blank and got him. Look at that. Let's see what those ores sell for. So see how I use this real mana efficient one? It has a long cooldown and numb and cold. And I back up. With this guy, you just keep backing up. Back up a few paces until your spell is ready to fire. There's about two or three seconds. And go ahead and do that and fire again and so forth. And that's basically all you do. Okay. Later on, we're going to be looking for groups because groups are going to be nice. They're going to really make the experience go faster, make the whole gameplay experience a lot more fun. This game's a lot more fun when played by in a group. And the reason why, you'll get to do dungeons and all that. If you were playing this character and you're just soloing, it's going to get slow because later on, the game gets really slow because the monsters have a lot of hit points. Okay, so let's look at these rocks. Tin ore, four nine copper okay so not really good money for silver okay that four silver would buy one spell that's good let's look at this here five copper so you kind of get an idea of what you want to loot and what you don't want to loot here we go look at this small cloth choker see they have a cloth choker right here this is for human they have a small cloth one so Right here you can see, it's, isn't it good that you don't, sooner or later you're going to get a cloth choker or something that's going to fit you. That's why it's good not to always um, buy stuff here. Of course they may not have your size, but you can trade this if you want to. Let's go ahead and sell this. 
and there we go we're gonna get some more gold here okay so that sells for good money and if you're in a situation where you're not really fighting and you know you're gonna fight and you may have a few moments to go practice your spell see how it fizzles a lot what this means when it fizzles a lot is it means that you need to get a higher skill and once again if we go ahead and look at abjuration which is what governs the success rate of that skill it's only 11 out of 15 so if you're here and you're waiting for somebody to come back from an AFK or they said, oh, I'm going to be gone for like 10 minutes or whatever, and your group is okay, we're going to do that. Just here and practice your spells like this. You got up to 12, and you want to do this. Still, tw well, it's channeling. It's channeling is good, too. It's channeling means so you can cast between being hit on. So you want to do this, uh, get this going. If you sit here, your meditate will improve if it needs to go any higher. And I would definitely do this. This spell here is using abjuration, which is the same thing as a shield. So you have to look at it this way. Do I want to cast minor shielding, which is 10 mana, or O'Keel's radiation? You should be casting minor shielding because minor shielding costs less mana. It casts faster, and um, you'll get more skill ups. So when you want to do a skill up, use a spell that's the least amount right here. And they've changed the skill up system. so. You can use low-level spells that will, to quickly raise your skill level. So there you go. You've got this. If you want to check, you want to say you get your evocation higher, you can let me see what is their evocation. Evocation is maxed, but you can go to an area that doesn't have any monsters in it. There's a safe area, and you can cast. Like, see, we go over here, and we can cast something like Numb and Cold. See, in a safe area, and this will cast like this. And each time it casts, you have a chance for a skill up. So you can practice your skill up the same way. This way you don't get so many fizzles. And one more. And there you go. Look, Abjuration 13. So there you go. We've improved it. Now your group is ready. If you do have a group, if not, you just go back out here. You get ready. It's always safe to hang around right here. And let's cut this guy. Anytime you see a guy with this, you want to nail him just because you want to get the stuff off them. And here we go, we got a rusty longsword, you don't care about that. And this guy over here is your death fist, you don't care about him, but he could have something for you. Let's hit him with the bolt, hit him with this, bam, he didn't have anything, but still we got experience from him. At this point in the game, you'll notice he's kind of low level, you are getting ready to go to the next level you want to fight things that are a little bit higher than you fight white con or higher you won't really see this out here you have to go out there but like I said try to get a group you'll see people looking for a group try to get in with them so that you can go ahead and um, and start leveling better because that way you won't have to do so much downtime for example group play goes something like this you get in a group they got a tank maybe they got another caster or they got a mage or something and you're the wizard. Well, what do you do with your wizard nukes? Do you fire right away? Nope, you just wait until the monster is about 50, 40 percent, and then you fire off two nukes. These are good for finishing shots. Uh, if somebody's running, you can shoot them down and add some DPS in there. Or if it's an emergency situation where there's another ad and they need to burn one mob down, you go all in on them. But basically, other people are going to be doing uh, most of the work. You just come in at 50 percent or whatever, depending on your mana, and just cut them down okay so I hope that helps all you guys starting all you out there starting a a wizard and remember if you have an erudite or something you're gonna have a lot more mana than this by by this level and you're gonna be able to cast many many more spells than what we're currently casting now okay hope this helps and uh, see you at the next video